discuss the young Republicans of Bradley County, I guess the uh, committee or party or whatever you want to call it. And so I thought, hey, it'd be a good time to have y'all on here and see what it's all about. Well, we appreciate you having us on. I know I looked at your website, and uh, man, you have all kinds of views for the short amount of time that uh, that you've had this up and running. You know, I put something out on Twitter and Facebook, and I said, this is the number one podcast in Bradley County. I love it. There's all kinds of views. Well, we try to have interesting, informative, and fascinating people. So we'll see which one you are. <laughs> <laughs> Probably neither. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially this guy right here. Yeah, so. well. <laughs> Lawson, you're, you're, you're Steve's son, right? I am. My dad is Sheriff Lawson. Um, I've known him my whole entire life. Have you? My whole life. Wow. My whole life. That's great. He's a good guy. I appreciate that, and I appreciate it. He wants to be sheriff. He really does. He really loves his job. Um, that's something that he's always loved, his police work. Um, that's just his home, it seems like. So. When I was at, I used to go to Munford's Home Improvement Center. Uh-huh. And we would uh, go to the back and drink coffee, and he would come in. And this was, I guess I was 15, 14. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I remember when he ran against Dan Gilly, and he, he was even nice to the people that didn't vote to, for him. Well, that's, that's something that my dad has always tried to teach me. You know, no matter what people believe or what they do, I mean, got to be nice to them I mean you always do the right thing because I mean that could be you that you know you're talking to somebody you may not be for them but Mm -hmm. you still want to treat people the way that you want to be treated you talk you sound just like him (laughs) (laughs) I get that a lot he looks like him too doesn't he he don't look as much like him as he sounds like him and talks like him to me I (laughs) well he you should have seen him before he grew the full beard and he just had the mustache he he looked a lot like him. oh yeah that's that's it um does he know you're here today? He does. He, I, I left him at the house just a few ago. I went over and saw him. So, but. now Hunter Shamblin, is that what relation to people in Cleveland? My dad's Joe Shamblin, and my mom is Erica Shamblin. And dad has been a teacher and a coach at Walker Valley High School mm-hmm. for for many years. And my mom is the principal out at Taylor Elementary School. Now, does Joe Shamblin? I, I know him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he's deep, about my height. Yeah, he? yeah, he's a he's a pretty tall guy. So, oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, he, that's right. He, uh, I think, I think he may have coached your son D for a season or two as oh, well baseball, too. So, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. Well, so what is it that that you do? What, what what tell me your role in this republic young Republicans? Well, I'm the chairman of the young Republicans, and uh, I. Uh, spearhead trying to get Republican candidates elected here in Bradley County. We work alongside Richard Burnett and the rest of the Republican Party. You know, we're two separate groups, the Young Republicans and the GOP, but we've got a great relationship and we're so blessed to have that because there's countless organizations of the Young Republicans and then the GOPs across the state that don't work good together. They don't even get along half the time, but we work great together and, you know, we've just hosted a big election night watch party, and I think that was a success. We partnered along with the GOP for that, and uh, you know our our main focus is to keep Bradley County red and keep it as red as we possibly can, and that's our number one goal. Who who deems you the chairman? Okay, well what we had done is our our past chairman. Um, we've had a couple past chairmen, and the club kind of fizzled out, you know, and it there was not much. Um, left to it, and then me and Chase talked on the phone one night, and we said we need to get we need to get the young Republicans back up and running. It's too important um, to have younger people involved with this, and it's too important to uh, to not to not have one, you know. And so we we decided to call the state party chairman. We called him up, told him we wanted to um, recharter the Bradley County Young Republicans. And no, no, go back. You called who? The chairman of the Young Republicans. The state. So there the, is the state Young Republicans. There is chairman. a yeah. actually an actual body for that. Yes, sir. Yes. I mean, yes. you, you, it's like five people 
can't get together and start their own. No, own we had to dessert. recharter and jump through the hoops that they have in place. We had to what, get our, what was involved with that? We had to get a certain amount of, I don't know off the top of my head, but a certain amount of members in our club to start off, and we had to have their signatures, and we had to have them sign. You know, what? most of the time when you get a new chairman, you have a vote on it, but because we had rechartered what the vote technically was was the signatures after we listed the positions we were going to put in for and then the signatures uh, certified that um, with the state and the state certified it too. Now the state, so the state Republican Party. Young Republican young, state. The, oh, so it's not the, who, who's in charge of the Young Republican? Ethan White is the state young Republican. Is he chairman. a young Republican? He or is. is, or he is, is old, yes, sir. What if that fizzles out? Uh, then that, that's that's. Yeah. I hope that never happens. Yeah. I don't think but, it ever has. But that's a scary. So, so I, I guess they have dues to pay up. Yes, the line, we, we pay dues. Yeah, we pay dues to the state, and you know that goes to help fund in the state with the uh, you know with with what they do, and 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 they have a lot of expenses they have to take on. They're Sure. Right now, they're fighting in Georgia right now for the Senate seats, you know, and so and that, that, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that the state does at the state level. And, and now, the, is this the young Republicans is, is separate than the Republicans? It is, yes, it is, but it's better when they work hand in hand together, you know, which we do here in Bradley well, County. Now, who deems the young Republicans of the state an actual group? Yeah, I guess. I, I get confused. Yeah, on the yeah, no, yeah. it's it's confusing. So yeah. it, it basically it works just like the state party, the, the state Republican Party, but it's the state young Republican organization. You know, mm -hmm. the state young Republican club. You can call it, you know, either one. And it, you have your state chairman and then your state board of directors, which I'm on the state board of directors because I'm the chairman of the Bradley County Young Republicans, and we vote on our bylaws and we vote on our agenda and what we want to do, you know, throughout the year. But we, we, we are a state board, but we kind of have branches off of that, which is like our, our uh, county organizations, mm -hmm. you know, and then we form our own Bradley County mm -hmm. Board of Directors and our own, uh, you know, our own organizations spring off. So it's, it's a lot to take in. And so, so this, you're actually a deemed party yes sir from the republican party or what we refer to as the rnc yeah so you're the real deal yeah <laughs> yeah yes sir do you I get to, you. can you get older too old you to, time out at 40 years old is whenever you're old. considered to not be a young republican anymore mm -hmm. so so you could join up with us then you're still yeah, that's right, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. we'll get you an application yeah. you all quit call me sir and call me d <laughs> yes sir <laughs> just call me d i'm just He's a, D. Okay. He's a good guy. He's a, <laughs> yeah. I'm, a re, I'm a regular D, a regular Joe or whatever. Okay. So, all right. So you're. So you. How many members are in the Young Republic right now? Oh, I think it's about it, thirteen, probably. Uh, we probably have more than that now. Is after it more, I'd say we're probably sitting around fifteen to twenty. Does now. it cost is that what to we're join? Now? Yeah, it's three. We it's the state is three dollars to join in which we don't charge anything on top of that um, so you send that to the state yeah I, I, we and, send it. and then so you you you'd say okay i want i'm 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 30 i want to join the Re young republicans you'd say okay yeah and you'd they'd give you your three dollars and you'd mail it to the state what? and the state would give it to the rnc and the rnc would fight for the Georgia Senate. Uh, something, something like that. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and I don't have to send them a $3 check every time, you know. It's just, well, we may get a influx of 10 new members, say, and then I'd mail them a check then, you so know. So you have a, ch a checking account? Yes, yes we sir. do. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, hmm. Do you have a, uh, you don't have an office? No, we no. don't have no. an office, no. so. So, um, so, Getting out of politics just a little bit is where did you where was your you sound like you're really into history or or what do they call that uh, social social studies or c civics yeah, yeah. Civics. yeah. all right yeah. Yeah. So, so are y'all civic majors no I'm actually a business administration yeah. major about to wrap up thank goodness we're, we're at Lee University mm -hmm. yeah yes, so so in four years and. Lee College? Well, I did two years at the University of Cumberland's in Kentucky. I played two years of baseball there and then got got a little homesick. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to leave Cleveland, yeah. Tennessee. You know, mm -hmm. I, I realized how great of a place this was. And then 
I moved off and I appreciated it a thousand times more and I didn't know that was possible. But just know. two years, so two that's years not there. even really moving no, off. No, yeah. no, two years there and then I'm about to finish up at Lee, hopefully here pretty soon. Yeah. So. And then what? Uh, then I'd like to get into business, so I'd like to start, uh, you know, developing rental properties and kind of kind of some of the same stuff that you do. And I've, you know, I've thought about going into yeah. the insurance industry um, before as well. So, and I, I've got a couple opportunities. I hadn't figured out what I, exactly I want to do but, after this. But business related. Yes, sir. Not medical. Not no. <laughs> no. And how about you, Chase? So I am a political science major at Lee. Um, I'm a sophomore and. Uh, I'm kind of along with Hunter. I, I don't really know exactly what I want to do yet. Um, I spent all four years, or all of my time in college at Lee, but, um, you know, I'm just taking it one step at a time, and, you know, whatever comes up, you know, I'll take advantage of. Um, no police? You know, I, I don't know yet. Um, I couldn't tell you definitively yes or no. Um, I know it's been a long profession of everyone in my family. Um, you know, my brother's been a police officer, my dad, my uncle, my uncle, my papa, you know, everybody has went in that line of work. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say it's not a possibility because it, it is, but, um, you know, I'm not going to nail myself down to that yet. Now, you're, now your uncle was who? Um, my uncle was Robert Lawson. Robert Lawson. So he was um, sheriff here in Bradley County in the 70s, I believe. I, rem- I remember. Mm-hmm. I was... Now, did he work with Sam Cannon, or was uh, Sam Cannon before him? I, you know, I, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I think maybe they were about the same time. Yeah, it would seem like it. And Robert went on to be safety commissioner. Yes, too, he right? did. Mm-hmm. Yes, yep. he did. Yep. Mm-hmm. So is have you heard the uh, theory that, that, that the – the human brain's not really developed till you're 25. I have. <laughs> I've heard I have that. I've heard that. Does that scare you? <laughs> I, that whatever decisions you're making now might be. I can look back till I was 25 and I think, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really <laughs> ironic that if you could look in the future, you would start headed that direction, but you don't know. And I think sometimes college forces you to decide at 19 yeah. what you're going to do the rest yeah. of your life. You yeah. say, well, you may you may want to be in business and he may want to be in politics. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and but, know, but now you've 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 specified in that and now now he knows about political science and and you, you know, it's Yeah. So yeah. it's it's really a I, it makes you wonder if it's kind of a, even worth it to to go to college till you're 25. And, you know, I think for some people it may not be the right thing to go to college. You know, mm-hmm. some people flourish in the trade industry or other forms of, you know, employment. But um, I think that I personally um, have went through life and, you know, I've looked at many different things, whether that had been in high school or different clubs that I participated in. And I was able to kind of, you know, out push out things that I wasn't going to be interested in doing my whole life. And now I'm in political science, and I feel there are many different routes that I can take from political science. You know, I can go to business, or I can go into politics, or I can go into government service. Um, and there's many different things, so I don't feel like I've nailed myself down yet, but I feel like I've given myself a good outlook for many different avenues. Left yourself uh, creating options. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, what, and do you think that, that say... 10 years from now, you'll look back and say, why didn't I focus on my career instead of dealing with the young Republicans? <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't think I will. And we can't say definitely, you know, where what we'll be thinking in 10 years. But, you know, already we, we hosted, and we, we've not had this, club chartered but for what maybe three months now four months so and we hosted a massive election night party you know i think we probably had a couple hundred out i was is that right? yes sir i was working the old night yeah, so i didn't God. get a chance to count you yeah. know but the room was packed and people were enjoying the night and people were there celebrating you know we had great candidates there like mark hall mm-hmm. and uh rep- or representative mark hall and then state senator todd gardenhire mm-hmm. and man just to see the night whenever 
you know, it got called um, for them to go back to Nashville and to be able to share that night with them and for people to be able to have a place to go where they could share that night with them, you know, as well, too. I, I don't think I'll regret it, you know, and, yeah. and I think it's well worth the time it we're is. putting in it. How, how did you, where, where was this at? I know it was at the Woolen Mill. Yes, sir, in the Weaver's room there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you have to rent that? You do. Yes, yes sir. Do. What's that cost? Twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. So where'd you get the twelve hundred? We split. Well, we split uh, six hundred with the GOP, and we went in six hundred with it uh, as well too. And we fundraise. You know, so we, the GOP, the national GOP, the Bradley County GOP. Oh, Bradley yes, County sir. GOP. Which is who? Richard Burnett's the chairman. Oh. So yes, I tell him he's the best chairman in the state. <laughs> so I, 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 I love Richard Burnett. You know, he's great. And yeah. He, helps us in any way he can to I saw him at the Trump rally in Chattanooga. He was <laughs> he was guarding the he he wouldn't let he said, You can't go you can't go this I was trying to go down. He said you can't go down. I said, Okay and I went across <laughs> to the next door and went down. <laughs> I love so it. You you can't follow all the rules. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> so they they Foot half, footed half yes, the they did. We, I yes, called sir. him. I said, I called Richard up, and that just goes back to how blessed we are to have such great relationship with him. And I, mm -hmm. I asked him, I said, y'all want to be a part of this with us, and you want to split it and go in half to half and host a big election night? And he was just, you know, right there on the phone. Of course, you know, we'd love mm -hmm. to, love to do it, and uh, you know, and so we, we wanted to, we wanted to, we, we raised quite a bit of money off of this event, but it wasn't the goal. You know, we wanted to really. Just have a big event to let people know that we had rechartered and that we were uh, we were back in action. You know, we wanted the community to to know. We wanted to get young involvement out, and you know, and it's people when they think young Republicans, they think you know, 18, 19 years old. But it's yeah. a lot of your people that fun that go to these functions, you know, are in their 30s and mm -hmm. low. You know, 40s not really is not really young. No, <laughs> yeah, I know it's kind of uh, confusing. You know, Doctor Doctor Manny that ran against Bill Haggerty. I just learned this the other day from our state chairman was actually one year out of uh, being a young Republican. So he had just timed out mm -hmm. of being a young mm -hmm. Republican. And I thought that was thought that was kind of wild. Now, why wouldn't the young Republicans and the Republican Party of Bradley County just have their thing at one spot? I, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. You know, I, I think maybe that goes back to there's certain things we can do and there's certain things that they can do. And, it, you know, it's best if we do have two organizations but work together when we can and work separately when we need yeah. to, to. You know, a lot, a lot of what we've done already with the Young Republicans is we've done a lot of ground game work for Senator Todd Gardenhire. You know, mm -hmm. he was in a tough election with Glenn Scruggs and you know we rounded up some people we went door knocked in Chattanooga you know mm -hmm. I took him around my actually my mm -hmm. subdivision we door knocked around you know we drove around drove him around on the golf cart but you know there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that younger Republicans can do we can hit a lot of doors for these good Republican candidates you know too. It sounds like you could be a very big pull for so if somebody was running for office and they had the young Republicans behind them you would you would have that group of 40 under kind of theoretically for you yeah mm -hmm. now as far as why you know we got, had this election I guess y'all left thinking Trump had won and I then, thought so. You know, yeah. so yeah so that will evolve I'm sure but why Republican for me yeah have you ever thought about that I mean yeah I mean yeah you know I know a lot of Democrats. I've had one or two mm -hmm. here, good friends of mine, smart people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if we differ that much on yeah. the way we think. It's just yeah. that we've, I guess, basically just, and, and as a Republican myself, I probably don't even agree yeah. with everything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. So is it just the label we put on ourselves? Uh, that's that's a good point. It you is. know, my the big thing for me is why I've been a Republican. You know, I've grown up Republican, been a Republican all my life. And, you know, whenever I got old enough to understand what Republican meant, you know, it, it has more to do than just party for me. You know, it, it honestly, the values of the Republican Party are the right values for me because of my faith in Jesus Christ. You know, and I feel like Christians, you know, as a Christian, I align more with the Republican Party values than I do with the Democrat Party values in, in a major way. And that's that's the main reason why I am a Republican and I believe and lower taxes and uh, you know and economic growth and, and I think the Republican Party facilitates that the best. 
Yeah. Does the Republican Party have a motto, or you know, if you could say, okay, what's the Democrat Party for, and what's the Republican <laughs> Party? Is there a place you can go say this is what they're for, and this is what they're for, or is it just kind of a? Well, I think everybody wants to be the party of the working man. Um, they all say that. Yeah, the, you all well, say you, that. You yeah. could say uh, the the popular one now, I think, is jobs and not mobs for the yeah, Republican yeah, yeah. Party. Yeah, that's so. a popular thing to <laughs> yeah. say. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, as you know, I, I grew up in a family that, you know, wasn't always a Republican. You know, um, my dad, he was a former Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, but the Democrat Party has evolved over the years, and I'm sure you've seen that across your life. I've, I've seen um, it, yep. The Democrat Party is not the Democrat Party that was 50 years ago. Um, Do we think it wasn't? Uh, but go ahead. The, well, the Democrat Party has become so progressive. They don't, they don't align with the values of the people in Bradley County anymore, I don't believe. They don't align with my values. I know they don't align with Hunter's values. Um, they've become too extreme, and they've alienated so many different people from their party. I think that if a party would have a list of what they, you, know, you could go and, and see their list, then you could decide which one you want to be a part of. Yeah. But neither one, or maybe neither one, is afraid to list them yeah. so that mm -hmm. they can blur the lines mm -hmm. between yeah. what we think. Mm -hmm. Trying to pull those swing votes. Yeah. I mean, over, the Democrats... Yeah believe in God, and so the Republicans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the Democrats are for the working man, and so is the Republicans. So have we, you know, I always, you know, like these football teams everybody roots mm -hmm. for, and, and they're rooting for this team, and the people on the team are not even from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you rooting for? You're well, really just rooting for a color, yeah, you know. Well, I think like the Bible says, you'll know them by their fruit, and 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 you know the different parties by their fruit. You know, when we've got a Republican administration, you, like President Trump, for example, four years of just great economic growth, and I think you've uh, you've I've ca you've captured the phrase that uh, you work work so hard in this Trump economy, you don't have time to to do to, anything. I don't have time to vote. Right? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. And you know, and, and I love that. I saw yeah. it on your Twitter. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just. We've got great economic prosperity under Republican administrations. You know, when you got a Republican House, Republican Senate, Republican President, you know, you can really move the needle for people whenever it comes to economic growth. Even as we've seen the past four years, just a Republican Senate for uh, for two years. You know, we had the House and the Senate for the first two, but uh, and a Republican President, President Trump has gotten so much done for the for the working class. I um, you know, we saw. Stocks rise, uh, people's 401ks shoot through the roof. You know, we interest, interest rates are low. I know, mm -hmm. and, and gas prices are low too. You know, I mean, who would have thought we'd ever seen the gas prices that we've seen again in our lifetimes this low? And that's just, you know, you can tell what a party really stands for by how they govern. And I think that, uh, you, you know, uh, for me, I would jump on ship with the GOP any day of the week because of how they govern differently. Um, than the left does, and you know, and I think too, a big thing for me right now is uh, you can see in these Republican states or Democrat states how they treat their law enforcement, you know, and that, that's a huge thing for me, and I know it is Chase, but mm -hmm. you know, you've got some states where it's like, uh, you, you know, you're you're alienating. We know where you stand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, it's no question where I yeah. stand. Some of these Democrat governors, you know, it's like they're criminalizing the men and women that protect us every single day. Mm -hmm. That strap on their uh, their gun and their badge, and they they wake up every morning to service, and they you know they treat them like criminals. And I, you know, I hate that. I could never associate with a party, and I know it's not all of them, but you know, you look at. Republican-led states like uh, like in Tennessee, you know, and, and where I feel like there's a strong respect and uh, and just for police officers and that you know we really appreciate them. Whereas in some states I don't feel like they do. At least the leadership doesn't. And you know I just think that's an insane thing that anyone might not uh, appreciate the men and women in law enforcement. So mm -hmm. I'm doing doing a job in Athens, and uh, so I've been driving there every yeah. day back. And as I go through Calhoun, I have to slow down to, <laughs> to 20 miles an hour yeah. mm -hmm. because there's the Calhoun police yeah. are sitting behind a bush yeah. <laughs> trying to catch me. And 
And and the reason I'm so nervous is because I've gotten three tickets through yeah, there. Through Calhoun. Yeah. Two of which I was not speeding. Yeah. So <laughs> you now that's a s s small thing. Yeah. But if I was to be stopped by the police and and had some really bad experiences, yeah. then that would make me. Yeah. I I can almost see what these people that maybe have lived through that yeah. can can get jaded mm -hmm. to the police. Mm -hmm. Although, but I don't think it's the police. Yeah. It's just one or two bad eggs. Yeah. That's the that's the thing, you know. And the the left so so long is just you know, wanting to categorize all of them into that uh, pot of being all bad apples, you know. And, and obviously, you know, there's situations where I'm sure there's bad cops and mm -hmm. different police, you know, police uh, um, sheriff's offices and police departments, you know, but it's not all of them. And, and the vast majority of them go into that profession to serve. And that's what we have to remember, you know, they, they are public servants every day of their life. Yeah, and if, and if you go down and you talk to a police officer, especially in this county, mm -hmm. You talk to a police officer, they want to serve. That's the whole reason they're in the job. They're not there for the money, are no, they? That, no, I mean, yeah. ha, they they deserve so much more pay, but that's that's the different story on that topic. Yeah. But they're there because they want to do the job and they want to serve the people. And, you know, I don't think any of them will, you know, set out to alienate people, alienate a person just because, you know, they don't like the way that you look, they don't like what you're doing, you know. I don't think anybody that is at the sheriff's department or at the Cleveland City Police Department would set out to do something like that. And if there is somebody that sets out to do something like that, that's where the leadership at the two departments, you know, can, you know, go through and weed out those bad apples. And I think they do a good job of doing that right now. Yeah, we don't have that problem here. Mm -hmm. Not, not. In fact, you don't really see police watching traffic like they used to and, and mm -hmm. giving tickets. I don't know if that's... Yeah, I mean, it's not about just handing somebody a ticket and saying, you go pay this $150 because... It has nothing, yeah, it has nothing to do with that. It's, it's, it's the the points on your driver's mm -hmm. thing and yeah, taking yeah. your license and the insurance. Code. But I don't see that as much as I used to. Yeah. Ten years ago, we'd see policemen everywhere mm -hmm. behind the bushes and under the bridges, but you don't see that anymore. It's about promoting a safe community. You know, all that I see police officers are there to do is promote a safe community and promote law and order. And I think they set out to do that. They don't set out to give you a $150 ticket and have you go pay it just because. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's uh, to pro it's for safety. Mm -hmm. You know, I watch Andy Griffith, and he says he's, <laughs> he's not, he was telling Opie that he wasn't, he didn't make the rules. He was just supposed to enforce them. That's right. Yep, that's it. Whether he liked them or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'd always try to get around them if he didn't. <laughs> <have to. laughs> uh, well, there's probably a little bit more action that goes on in Bradley County. I'm sure, than yeah. Mayberry. Mayberry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and, and of course, we don't have Barney. They have yeah, Barney. that's exactly yeah. We can call him Barney then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I liked old Barney. Barney I did was too. One. No, if you want a Barney, I guess we could say uh, maybe maybe Brian Smith, Bullet, the, nah, the legend Brian Smith. I give Brian a tough time every now and then, I but Brian's Brian. a good one. Yeah. I like Brian. I don't know him. I don't think. He's the chief deputy. He's the chief deputy. Uh, trustee county. Mike Smith's brother, so he's a oh. great, great guy, so yeah. I, I love Brian Smith. Yeah. Now, what's your role in this Young Republicans? So, I am the vice chairman. Um, like Hunter said, uh, he called me. I guess it was probably, what, August? Probably. And he said, hey, I got an idea. Let's let's reform this young Republican Party that, you know, we grew up with in the 2018 election cycle um, that had kind of fallen apart. Um, and then through talking with chairman of the GOP, Richard Burnett, and Ethan White, you know, we found out that they had let their charter expire and that the club was no longer a valid club through the state. Um, so he called me and he said, hey, will you help me do this? And, you know, of course, I, Hunter's, my, Hunter's one of my best friends. Um, and anything that Hunter wants me to help with, uh, as long as, you know, it's not awful. <laughs> uh, or too awful. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm there for it. And this is a cause that I can get behind mm -hmm. um, because we're promoting the next generation. And uh, 
I'm all about, you know, I got little cousins and I got, you know, people that I want to see succeed in the world and I feel like I'm making the world a better place to live by promoting Republican candidates. And I think, too, the more you have to do, the more you can do. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the old saying, if you want something done, you know, get, what's that? Do it yourself. Do it yourself. No, yourself. no, there's another saying, if you want something done, get the busy man to do it. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. something about the busier you are, the more you can get, of course, yeah. get yeah. stuff oh, yeah. done. Yeah. So maybe by doing this, it gives you, I'm sure you've got school work, right? Oh, now. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, loaded down. <laughs> when, when do you have to do to do it? I mean, you know, I, I do school work uh, every night of the week. I have about, you know, three or four hours that I just have to set aside that I, you know, put my head down and get it done. Um, and then then I can do things. Do you do, do, you do, that, do you religiously do that every night? or? Um, I, I, if I have to do it, I will set out three or four hours. I try to, you know, at least set that out and make that my, you know, time frame. Um, now, if I get my school work done before then, obviously I'm not going to, you know, spend the other hours on it, but, you know, it takes that kind of planning and time management to be able to succeed, I do believe. Because schoolwork is college is not, I didn't go to college, but I assume it's a lot harder than, <laughs> it's than so much Bradley harder. High School. <laughs> it's yeah. so much harder yeah, than high is. school was, and um, every day you got to, you know, go work hard, because them professors, I mean, they, they care about you at Lee, but, I mean, you got to put the work in. They're not just going to give you a degree. Um, they probably just, is it like when I went to school, they'd give you the lesson, teach it, and maybe give you some homework. But my understanding, the new way is to kind of tell you where you're supposed to go online to, to download it, to do it, to upload it, to send it in. There's a lot of that. There is a lot of that. And, so uh, where, where is the teaching? Well, different classes are different ways. Um, you know, I have accounting where we do stuff that's online, and then I have political science teachers that, you know, don't even allow electronics in their class. You know, we, we do straight whiteboard and notebook paper, and we go through lectures for maybe nine weeks, and then we take a midterm exam on it. Then we go another nine weeks, and we take notes, and then we have a comprehensive exam um, that's a final. Sounds to me like that's a good way to do it. It, it is, and I, and I like those teachers. Um, those are my political science teachers mostly, um, where I get into higher level classes in the discipline. And um, I, I love my political science professors. Dr. Mark Scully, Dr. Tom Pope, Dr. Anna Alves, they do a great job at Lee. Well, Lee is a, boy, we really got something good with Lee College being here, don't we? You'd have to go where, you know. Mm -hmm. Tennessee Westland, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why did you decide to go to Lee versus? Where I was at? Yeah. Well, the main thing for me was I wanted to be back here at home in, in Bradley County in Cleveland, Tennessee. You know, I moved away, played two years of college ball there, and, you know, I, that was always my dream growing up. That I'd played baseball since I could walk, you know, and I wanted to go play in college. And I got my feel of it for two years, and then I decided it. it, it did you get burnt out? I, I did and I didn't. You know, I still miss baseball. But the thing that it came down to me was, was what are my priorities? You know, do I is it so much that I want to keep playing baseball or am I ready to move home and, and start my career, my life, and my future? You know, it's kind of my thing. And, and that was the main um, decision for me. And I've got, you know, family here, grandparents, and I, you know, even – even my dog, I always, people make yeah. people tease me. But you know, I said you never, you never realize how nice it is just to be able to come and come to your house and pet your dog when you get home. Yeah. You know, so that getting I, off to college, you could, it could die while you're gone. Yeah, I you know, could. I know, and and so I, you know, I, I just missed being here. You know, is why I moved back. Now, when I noticed a lot of people in college go to these coffee shops. And, I don't study. do that. that. How do they do that? That I don't know. That that's not for me. You know, you'll see some of them go in with their with their real tight jeans on and their yeah. jeans rolled up yeah. and their you know their toboggans in eighty degree weather. And that's they'll, and they'll order some kind of a drink that's so complicated. Yeah, <laughs> and it'll be a ten, it'll be a ten dollar drink or something like that. And I'm and, like, and the, and the person behind the counter is spending eight minutes 
I know. Putting it together. What's wrong with <laughs> And they'll a, leave, and it's they didn't even drink it. What's wrong with just a black cup of coffee to just keep you? I, I mean, think they just want people to see them walk up there and, and get it, <laughs> and go back and sit down like like they're starting the new they're starting the new Facebook that only they can do. That's right. And they're real smart. That's right. That, because I, why else would you do? If you're I, gonna, I mean, why not go to the to the library, yeah, exactly. to the back room mm -hmm. where nobody's at, exactly, and 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 study. Yeah, yeah. why exactly. do it there? I don't know. Yeah. I've I've never done it. Never I would will. say <laughs> if you took it, if you took some kind of a research, you'd find that the ones that studied at the coffee shop versus <laughs> the ones that studied at the library wonder who got better. Grades. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, I think they like the atmosphere or whatever. But I mean, they, I, I don't get it. You know. Well, I don't care what the atmosphere is as long as I can go in and get what I need to get done. done. I'd rather get you know, it done yeah, than get gone. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's my thing. I guess they got too much time on their hands. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but there's something. They do it. They do. Yeah. You're exactly like right. Like Bond Life and that, <laughs> the, the coffee shop. What and, gets me is the drink is like eight to ten bucks a drink. Like, who wants to buy that? You know, yeah, and who wants whipped cream in their coffee? That doesn't sound, no, doesn't sound very fis I mean, fiscally no, conservative, I don't even know what does they, it? No, <laughs> Do you think you can tell what people are if they're Democrat or Republican by what they order at the coffee shop? You probably can. You know, if I see somebody walk in maybe earlier in the day and get a black coffee yeah. and... Uh, and get in and get out, and maybe they're a conservative, and then you list off the the well, I can't even know the macchiato, whatever. I don't you know. even mocha but something. It Everything's just, mocha. It just sounds a little. It just sounds a little bit on the liberal lean oh. side to me. So what about when they say, uh, "Do you want me to leave room for cream and sugar?" How much could that take? How much room could that take? <laughs> that much room? I know. That was I mean, how much room could it I take? Don't know. If I want it, I'll I'll drink a little bit and then add it. Yeah, then add it. But you know, when I was uh, at Munford's, mm -hmm. speaking of Munford's, uh, we were in the back room drinking coffee, and maybe your dad was there. I don't know, but he'd come in there some. But I was uh, fourteen, fifteen, maybe. And Gene Officer, my good friend, was getting some coffee. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, I'll be big and get me some coffee, too. So I started to put cream and sugar in it. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm putting cream and sugar in it. And he said, hey, he said, coffee t tastes bad no matter how you drink it. You require a taste for it. Acquire a taste for it black, and you won't spend the rest of your life looking for cream and sugar. That's right. Yeah. And so, it to work? this day, I don't do <laughs> yeah. anything in it, but look how much time he saved me. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, exactly right. right. Now, that's a good point, the booming economy. What are you seeing? Well, right now, it's kind of hard to tell because, to my knowledge, the economy right now, if we want to talk about the stock market, you know, in itself, is actually doing okay even with all this election uncertainty, you know, and, and what I've gathered. Now, election uncertainty, mm -hmm. it is uncertain at this point. It is. By the time this podcast comes out, it may not be, it may not. but right now, yeah. it's not official, yeah. correct? And, and, you know, and what people got to understand, too, the news networks don't decide who the president is, you know, and they've, they've called it, you know, if these votes hold up, then then that so be it you know but these news networks have called the the race and i think that's not good because it's you know it's provided some uncertainty with the american people whenever the the actual election isn't certified until december when the electoral college meets and then it's certified yeah. boy that let's go into that because that's what everybody doesn't know or doesn't understand or doesn't even know to ask. so so we can have elections and we can vote let's say that trump that, that that a candidate a won the most votes he's not won yet till there's a process yes right? mm -hmm. the state so, certifies and then the electoral so the, college. the state yeah. has to somebody says secretary of state secretary mm -hmm. of state is job one of their jobs is to say these votes are correct mm -hmm. or do they say this state votes for well, to my understanding, before the Secretary of State doesn't have anything to do with the litigation process on these, they'll certify the elections, you know, 
when the courts give them the A-OK. Like, let's say in Pennsylvania, you know, that that's not certified yet with all this litigation going Is on. Is Tennessee certified? I'm not sure. I would... I don't believe so. Do you know and the why, why wouldn't Why wouldn't it be... I just think there's a process. I don't know what it is. All the mm -hmm. votes have to be counted too. Like, yeah. Before it... I, I think I think the process is probably put in place to make sure that you know everything is right and you know we don't make mistakes that you know maybe other states may make or you know people may make in just a first time count. And I think we push that off to the first of December, right before the electoral college meets. Okay. And. State the state will sign off on that, and uh, so the state has to sign saying, "Here's the votes." Yeah. Or do they say Tennessee went this way, or do they say we had this many votes for this candidate and this for this candidate? I, Secretary of State, certify it and take it to yeah. the federal government. Yeah, I believe um, if you pay attention to like your ballot, you, you're voting for the electors of. So I think that you're voting for those electors that will be sent to the Electoral College to then cast their vote. It would be like Tennessee mm. awards their allotted number of electoral votes to Donald mm -hmm. J. Trump is how it would be set up. That's why we have the Electoral College. Yes. So, so when we vote, if I've got this right in my head, we are voting for our electoral representative mm -hmm. to vote for us that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, do they have to vote that way? They actually do not, to my understanding. Yeah, I, I think there is exceptions to where they don't have to, but that is very few and far between that they do not. It's, I mean, that'd be a... Yeah. Well, they, be, they tried to do it in 2016 with President Trump where people there was a big push of trying to get the electors mm -hmm. to vote for Hillary Clinton. You know, and and, and I, I guess that's their choice. Now, do we elect... Do we elect what do you call them? The electors? Yeah, do we sure. elect the electors? I, I think, Actually, you do, I think. That's a political yeah. science question. I, I think, um, I Maybe think the way they would do test. it is that the Tennessee GOP um, will uh, select the electors. So they're going to do that with the, um, you know, with the RNC in mind and with the Republican nominee in mind to make sure that <coughs> when they do go vote for the electoral, in the Electoral College that they were, they're not going to be people that are going to switch up on you. So, so the electoral now John Stansberry. What is it he does? Isn't that he's an to do with that? He's a state executive committeeman. So he uh, he, you know, I you'd have to ask John the ins and outs of his job. But you know, I think reckon the, he'd know. He, I think he'd know. I think the world of John Stansberry. You know, <laughs> he'd tell you. I, 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 he came to our election night party. Yeah. And I had the chance yeah. to talk yeah. to him, and he. You know, I think a lot of what he does is shaping the party agenda for uh, because he's a state executive party member, you know, so. But John Stansberry does a great job. Good guy. Isn't it funny that people don't know exactly the whole process? The whole process, I mm -hmm. know. So there's more to it, obviously, yes. than just voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes you wonder if the vote even counts. I, I guess it does. it does, but. Yeah. I mean, does it really matter? I, I guess it does, but for, what you're saying is you, you, you feel it's, that we vote for our electors to go hold up that sign, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes, basically. Now that that's not that's not at this election. That's for to nominate. You got your primary and your yeah. general. Yeah, but that's not. Is that would that be for the general? Y yeah, general? that's yes. you're just you're just electing the electors. I do believe for the general, um, and then in the primaries, you're so elect our electors, which is. Our elector of Tennessee has what? Uh, nine, I do believe. So we, so we have, so we're, we, we all vote as Tennessee that our electors vote this way. Mm -hmm. Nine. Yes, sir. And that's, so that's why the popular vote doesn't count. It's getting yeah. the yeah. electoral. Yeah, the popular vote, which a lot of people want to push for that, but you, states like. Uh, like even Pennsylvania, states like Pennsylvania and you know the small Nevada and Arizona is you know they'd be alienated if we, yeah. you'd only campaign in New York, maybe Florida, but basically you wouldn't go to California, Etowah, Tennessee. No, well. you'd, and and you'd never campaign in swing state. North Carolina would never be thought of again, you know, and it'd just yeah. be it'd just be you'd focus on California, New York, yeah. Florida. Basically. I know this is a crazy question, but I guess this is all. Did this all evolve or was this written in the Constitution? That's a good question. Because if it was, 
you set out and lay out all these scenarios that evidently they did a good job. Yeah. Because who would have thought of that? Yeah. I wouldn't have thought no, of that. Me neither. Yep. I believe this is laid out in the Constitution. Well, that would be, if we all sit here and had to figure that out, we'd never get it done. Good thing yeah. we weren't founding fathers yeah. then, I believe. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it, now, maybe it was based on some other country that had it. And maybe it was partly done or something. Yeah. I don't know. But it's but that's what it's like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, so the certification is who's responsible for certifying it for the states. Whose department does that fall under? Whose heading does that fall under? That's going to be your Secretary of State. And who is Tennessee Secretary? Trey Hargett. Trey Hargett. And who voted? Who made him Secretary of State? Governor Bill Lee. So the governor appoints the Secretary of State. In some states. It, yeah, in, some, in most states, like Tennessee, it will be appointed by Governor Lee. Kentucky, they're voted, voted yeah. for, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Vote for, yeah. Yeah, Kentucky but, votes for their Attorney General, their um, Secretary of State, all those different offices. Tennessee's kind of a weird state because we only have three full state, you know, ele elections, and that's your two senators and your governor, you know, so that's mm -hmm. kind of kind of strange, but... You know, it, every state's a little different. Every right? state mm -hmm. is. Yes, sir. You know, if I had, if I had, could suggest something to the United States, which I probably which they won't listen to, me, <laughs> but I, I would have a streamlined system mm -hmm. and a streamlined voting process, yeah. so that there wasn't a question what how this state did yeah. it and that state did it, because since we're all voting on the same thing, mm -hmm. we should have the same way of voting. Yeah. Now, if they want to vote on how to treat the ocean, fine. <laughs> if we want to vote on state regulate how we want to deal with Okoy River, that's that's our yeah. business. Yeah. But when it becomes, or if we want to vote on how we want to educate or how we want to have our police or whatever, that's that's sort of our area. But when we're all voting on one common thing, it needs to be voted the same way. Well, yeah. Now I think now more than ever that's so important because look at the chaos that's going on in some of these states. I mean, my gosh, mm -hmm. we've got states, and when this podcast actually airs, there still may be some states that haven't even been certified. You know, that, that, or that by the Secretary of State, the Secretary if of that state allows their Secretary of State to certify. That's exactly yes. right. Yes. But Does I, any states not have the Secretary of State? I, I do not believe so. I, I believe every state has a Secretary of State, and they're to the certify. ones that certify. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To my knowledge, yeah. But I to mean, my it, knowledge. It, uh, right now, look at some of the states. How chaotic it is, and look at how far Florida has come. I mean, think of the two thousand race without yeah. board. How much chaos Florida caused, mm -hmm. and then this go around. Florida had it ready to go, tip yeah. top shape. And I believe they said we're not going to yeah. be the 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 uh, the story anymore. You know? Yeah, they they got that host. They they did they did they did they weren't going to do. Mm -mm. Evidently like what happened to him before. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. I was watching that this morning on uh, YouTube is all of the things that happened in 2000 with yeah. that. And, and uh, you know, for 30 days, they were announcing that Gore was the president yeah. and then yeah. they'd flip it. And so this may be nothing new. Yeah. Maybe this is all, but whatever the process is, we evidently have a process and whatever it's in the hands of the courts now, yeah. you know. Yeah, and and that's a shame when it, it has is. to be in the hands of the court. Yeah. Yeah. It it doesn't it doesn't need to be in my opinion it, it needs to be whatever whatever happened and not for somebody well, to interpret yeah. what the law is. It, it yeah. could have been solved by by one thing and that's to require a voter ID at the ballot box mm -hmm. and in-person voting. Now I get the exceptions for your shut-ins and your military men and women serving overseas mm -hmm. with the absentee ballot process. This whole debacle with, oh, we're going to send ballots to these people's houses that are voters, you know, and then, like certain states are doing. And then you that just opens the door for states to do ballot harvesting. I don't know if you have heard of that before, but is that where they had the drive-by well, drop people box? Can, yeah, people can go and say, or you, you know, basically collect their ballots and fill out whoever they want to. It's just, it's just a mess, and you could fix all that by in-person and in-person voting, and then requiring a valid ID. You know, and then you would never call into question who had won the election if you required those things. And I think if in the next uh, the next 
time the United States House and Senate go into session, I think the main thing out of the gate needs to be in post or in person voting and requiring a valid ID for the votes or for that person to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. And absentee voting, I don't know how you deal with that, but I guess your your well, ba your ballot would have a the, number and your number would have to course the difference between that and mail-in voting is they request the absentee ballot so let's say my let's say like a, a, a oh yeah an elderly lady can't get out to the polls she can request that and it comes to her house she's requested it but it's not been sent there to her by the state you know to where who knows what like, let's say her uh, son gets yeah, it or her and daughter it gets out. it yeah, yeah she exactly. requested it you know it's the and that process has got to be rigorous too i don't know the exact steps for it but, you know, I mean, the, there needs to be some hoops to jump through for that. We've always well. had absentee ballots. Yes, there's nothing, yes, wrong, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with nothing. that. It's the process of sending it to everyone. Yes. And then maybe, I guess you could sell your sell your vote that way. Yeah, it could can, be happening. Now happen. you'd have some yeah. value there, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's wild. So, yeah. I mean, voter intimidation, you know, it, it's crazy, you know. I mean, it's just uh, the, the in-person... Voting with a valid ID is the only way to fix this, in my opinion. The only yeah. way. And or by absentee with request. Yes, of that. but you know it wouldn't. That would if you just the absentee process would not even be, um, in most cases, enough to flip the election. No, and, yeah. You know, but what we've got. And wrong, at least you'd know that that was the person. What's your yeah. name? Mm -hmm. And if and and we'll send it to that. And then and then if they had another one, they'd say. No, we can't take this one because yeah. this one's already been duplicated. Yeah. Exactly. If we can't be certain of the outcome of our elections, and then where, where are we at as a country? Well, if exactly. we can't be certain of the election, we might as well just have a show of hands. That's you, exactly you know, right. Everybody from Biden, know. raise your hand. I know. I, know. I mean, it, what's the difference? You're exactly right. Lord. So the eyes have it. Yeah. Okay. But I think whoever becomes president will get behind them, and we'll be for them. Whether we like it or not, whether it's Trump or whether it's Biden, because we're the United States. That's right. You know. So, do you have? Uh, do y'all have any aspirations for running for office? I mean, I know you're in. You sound like you're very knowledgeable about how this stuff works. Yeah, I, you know, I'd be lying to you if I told you that I'd never thought about running for an office. Uh, but you know, my thing is is. I rely on my friends and my family and my faith. You know, I'm praying about it when the right time for me to do something like that would be. You know, I'm relying on guys like the one sitting beside me here, Chase, and guys like Stephen Shelton um, to, to, to help me decide when the right time to do that would be. You know, and that's, that's the thing. It's all about timing, and you've got to have a game plan. And if you're not in it to serve, then you don't need to get in. As well, too. And if I did, I'd want to do it to serve the community. Yeah. In talking with y'all, just a few, just to last a little bit, I'm I'm positive y'all have a game plan. You may not have it out yet, but you've got a plan. Yeah, I, you know, I'd be lying if I said that me and Hunter, you know, didn't have phone conversations <laughs> where we're like, hey, you know, we want to, we want to really serve one day. You know, we're, we we want to get into it to help people, um, and. I'd be lying if we if I say that we didn't talk about that a lot. But you know that's that's our lives, you know. Um, and I want to get out in front to where I can actually make a difference in life. You want to have a voice, I guess, as they say. I, I want to have a voice, and I want to be the voice for people that elect me, if I ever run for office. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Hunter, what where do you live? What's your uh, your uh, where, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, what, what's your, what's your, what age are you? Twenty one, twenty two. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so, uh, so th you can run for office at yeah. at, at an yeah. age, and so, um, why not run for for an office that doesn't require twenty four hours a day or something? Yeah. To I mean, you're already in office. You're yeah. you're the chairman of the <laughs> of the Young Republicans. You're yeah. the vice chairman. Yes, you've sir. been elected. Yeah, yeah. You you you've been elected actually. Yeah. So, what's your next election? Uh, that's that's a good question. You know, I, I've thought about some different local uh, jobs here that I think about running for. Um, but you know, I, my heart is here in Bradley County, and you know, and that's 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 always been my heart, and I think it'll always be my heart. You know, and I really care about 
helping my community and helping the people you know that are my neighbors and the people that uh, you know, I talk to every day the people just the people the good people of Radley County you know and that's my my heart is is in this community and if I did decide to run for something it would definitely be something in Bradley County you know where I could really feel like I could help and I and I'm I wouldn't do it just to be elected you know I think we have some politicians now that want to jump in and run for something because they want to be a mayor or a commissioner or a whatever they want to be you know I, I think that that's that's we can't be like that we've got to jump in when we feel like we can make a difference and serve the community and if you can't serve and you're not in it to serve, then you don't need to get in. Well, if that wasn't practice, it sure was good. <laughs> I appreciate oh. it. So. Well, I really wish y'all luck, and I can tell you right now, y'all are absolutely going to be heard of later. I appreciate <laughs> it. We appreciate that. I appreciate y'all coming. You. Thank you for having yeah. us on. I appreciate it. Thank you. The number one podcast in Bradley That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs>